Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome back. Today I'm going to make a fun and colorful card using these dies by Sizzix. And in this die set you get a flower pot, three different designs of cacti, as well as a little heart. I'm going to use pretty much everything, I'm just not going to use the heart here. And I'm going to bring in my die cutting machine to start cutting out my pieces. Now I'm going to need three different pots, as well as all three designs of cacti. So I'm going to use this uh, white cardstock, and this is actually uh, watercolor paper. And uh, I'm showing you here which pad I'm using using for watercolor and I'm going to make sure that I will leave a link down below in case you are interested. I'm actually going to cut out everything from the smooth side of the watercolor paper, but of course you can use both. I am placing all the dies on top and I'm actually using here the magnetic platform, so I'm going to run them through my big shot. Now there are actually two different headquarters of Sizzix, the one is in USA and the other one is in UK and they do have different designers and sometimes uh, different uh, designs are not available in uh, certain parts of the world. And that's the case with this uh, die set, it is available definitely in Europe and I will leave links down below on where you can get it. And if you live in the US or Canada, you can either order it online, but I will make sure to leave uh, similar links down below on uh, products that you can get to create a similar look. So now I have cut out four flower pots, I do have my cacti ready to go and I decided to go with a watercolor look for today and that's why I'm going to use my Nuvo Aqua Flow pens. These are amazing, I really love how they flow, they are really juicy if you press them and um, I'm also going to use a watercolor brush, this is, has a, a barrel and a nice tip and it's always wet so you don't really need to dip into water. And in the buckets you actually get two different uh, watercolor brushes with two different nibs. One is a fine tip brush and the other one is a medium. Now I'm going to show you how to start them. You need to get rid of that yellow ring. You need to open up the bottom barrel and then fill it in with uh, water. Then you need to place everything back in. Make sure that you screw the tip nice there until you hear that click sound and you are ready to go. And uh, you don't really need that uh, ring anymore. So this uh, is a waste. Now I will go ahead and start coloring. Remember I'm working on a watercolor paper and that's why I do end up having such a nice blending with my colors. Now I am adding a little bit of color on one side of the flower pot and then with my watercolor brush I'm going to move the color all the way towards the other side. This way I make sure that I have darker and lighter areas. And you can go ahead and work it out as much as you like. I am going to make sure that it's not as light at the top uh, right corner as it looks now. And now if you are wondering what I am doing with uh, the brush when it's not on screen, I just have a towel right next to me and I make sure that I clean my brush there. So I'm just going to bring it in for you so that you can see what I am doing. Now I have moved on to the orange and uh, again I'm using the same technique, apply a little bit of color on one side and then with my water brush I'm going to move it towards the other side. So as I was coloring today and as I am doing the video editing and the voiceover at the moment, I do have my air conditioning on. It's really, really hot here in uh, Greece at the moment. We are in the middle of a heat wave. It was 40 degrees today. It's like that outside. You can't even breathe. And um, that's about uh, 104 Fahrenheit, I believe. And uh, I do need to have the air conditioning on, so I hope it's not very distracting for you and you can't really hear that sound. So anyway, I will continue coloring my flower pots using the exact same technique. It's, and it's going to be red, orange, this is going to be yellow, and the next one it's going to be blue. So I'm kind of following the rainbow order, but just because I will have enough uh, green for my cacti, I decided to skip the um, green for my pots. 
I will continue coloring the cacti now and I'm going to show you different ways to use those pens. So instead of uh, just um, uh, blending out the color with your watercolor brush, you can uh, make sure that uh, the image is totally wet. So this is what I'm going to do here. I'm spraying my cactus with water and now I'm going to bring in two uh, brushes. These are dark green and uh, lighter green. And I'm going to color directly on top of that uh, watered down uh, cactus. So you will see that I'm going to squish it nicely. So this is going to be nice and juicy and I like when that happens. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the bottom half. And then I'm going to make sure that they are nicely blended. So as you can see, you can keep those uh, aqua flow pens to uh, be quite... Um, dry on the dry side but if you squeeze them a lot of uh, color comes out and they become super juicy which is uh, something that I really love because you can actually use them in both ways like I did for the flower pots or for this uh, cactus. So I will continue coloring the next one and for this I am going to uh, mix two different colors so I'm going with this teal blue one and I'm going to use the light green as well. And you can see how beautifully they mix together without effort at all. So I'm going to speed up uh, the video a little bit and I will let you see how I colored all uh, the cacti. And uh, as this is uh, happening, I want to let you all know that there is a giveaway running on my blog at the moment. And uh, I will make sure to leave a a link down below in the description area for the giveaway. I do have uh, the pleasure to give away one July card kit by Simon Says Stamp, so make sure to enter the giveaway. By the way, I will post my one kit 10 cards next week, so stay tuned for that. And for the last cactus, as you can see, I mixed up uh, yellow with that teal blue one. And uh, I did get uh, a little bit of green when those were those uh, two colors blended. So I'm ready to go. Now I am going to work on this uh, piece of paper. And this is actually watercolor paper. Again, it's the same watercolor paper that I, that, uh, the, with the one that I used for all those images. And I want to create kind of a um, ground for all my pots to stay on. So I am going to mask to mask off the bottom of this panel and uh, then I am also going to make sure that I mask off the sides just because I used a rectangle die that has some stitching all around and I want to make sure that when I apply my inking it's not going to go outside that stitching line. It has to do with uh, being neat. You don't really need to do that. And um, for applying my ink I'm going to use a blending tool and as you can see on your screen I'm going to use Distress Oxide ink and that that's Broken China, which is a color that I absolutely love from the previous release. Now as I'm applying uh, the ink down, I'm making sure that I don't load up my blending tool with too much ink and that's why I get a nice blended out look. So mainly at the bottom I stayed with uh, a lot of ink and as I go towards the top I don't have as much ink. So kind of an ombre look. Now I'm going to spray water and uh, you can't really see how wet that is but I'm going to lift uh, the craft mat so hopefully you saw how wet that was. I'm going to leave it for a little bit to oxidize and then I'm going to blot it with a piece of cloth. So now it looks even smoother. And as I am removing the masking tape now you can see a nice clean edge that I got at the bottom as well as at the sides. Now I am ready to assemble my card but first I am going to add the sentiment at the bottom and for that I am going to use the word uh, celebrate that comes from this Sizzix die and that's actually available all over the world. You will find links down below if you are interested. So I am going to look for uh, the one that says celebrate. I am going to make sure that it's nicely aligned at the bottom and then I am going to run it through my Sizzix Big Shot. And as I am going to take that out, you can see that uh, the 
pieces that inside the letter B or the letter R are missing, you can keep them if you wish to and uh, stick them when uh, you finish the card inside those uh, empty spaces. But I really won't bother with that. I'm just going to leave it as it is because I think that it's uh, readable <laughs> and I'm just going to embrace that look. So anyway, I'm going to prepare all the pieces by adding some foam tape at the back and I'm actually going to uh, combine two different uh, foam tapes here. So for all the flower pots, I'm going to use those squares, which are quite bulky and thick, and I will get a nice dimension. But for the cacti, I'm going to bring in my foam tape, which is by Scotch, and it's not as bulky as those squares. And this way I can achieve dimension with different layers. And since I have four different flower pots, I'm going to place two of them on one side and of the card and the other two on the other side, slightly overlapping one another. So here is the first one, ready to go. And now you can call this card done or you can take it a step further just like I am going to do here. So I'm going to use this thread and I'm going to tie a knot on the tallest cactus from one side all the way to the tallest cactus on the other side. I actually did a double knot on each end and uh, I also added a glue dot at the back just to make sure that these knots will stay put. I used my scissors to trim off the excess and now I have the perfect space to add some banners which are actually going to complement the sentiment so it's going to be a celebrate card with some banners on top. And just like I did for the rest of the images I used the same technique for coloring my banners and uh, I'm not adding any new colors so the banners are going to be again the same red as the pot, the orange and the yellow. And I will end up uh, using only three of those flags instead of four that I have cut out there. And I'm going to make sure that uh, I bend this uh, string a little bit so I have a nice curve from one side to the other. And for that I'm uh, using a glue dot. And then on top I'm going to stick the banners. I am going to stick those with uh, tiny little foam squares. But again, you can just use uh, glue dots and uh, they will uh, keep the flags absolutely fine up there. And I'm going with a black card base just because the card is so vibrant and I think that that black contrast is going to complement all the colors and at the same time it's going to provide a nice base for that cutout sentiment. So it's going to be readable even more. Now I'm using my ATG gun at the back, applying lots of uh, adhesive and I'm going to center it at uh, my card base. And that was the card for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired. Don't forget that you can find links to all the supplies that I used today down below in the description area. Here are some close-up photos of the card that I made today. And don't forget to enter the giveaway that is on my blog. You will find links down below again. Thank you all so much for watching and for your lovely comments. I am sending you lots of hugs all the way from super hot Greece. Have a lovely weekend and see you all next week.